Welcome back. I'm going to be moving through this one kind of quick. Yeah, the sound may lag a little bit, and I apologize. The last video, this is the second SnapCAD video expanding on the basics. I wanted to start with the help file, if you'll check that out, with the help, help topics. Uh, describes help CAD and all of the details needed to answer all the questions associated with the commands and the functions of SnapCAD. Uh, a particular way to start is to look at the toolbar under overview. The toolbar optimi uh, doc optimiz optimized arrangement uh, is a real good way to lay out your toolbars to perform tasks quickly. Uh, it also has all of the toolbars and descriptions of each of the buttons with links to more details on the functions that each of the buttons perform. Uh, another thing to look at is the hotkeys. These are the various commands and functions that SnapCAD, uh, the button combinations on the keyboards to help you perform these tasks quickly. Um, so that's it. Let's go back to the program. Let's start by adding a couple of parts. We'll find a beam. We'll stick the beam in. And we'll find a pen. Like in the first video, it will come in and drop in the grid. Uh, we'll select it, color it blue. If you notice up here, they start stacking under each other. Each part that you add will be positioned each other under each other unless you add uh, you go back up in this list or select another part somewhere in the list and add another part. It will be added in the arrangement and the orientation and color of the part that you had selected before it by default. So we're just going to change that one blue again. And what we're going to do now is to learn how to select pieces. You can do that in several ways. One best way is to grab them with, well, individually by clicking one at a time or selecting them with a binding, bo uh, binding box. And that will select every one of them that's visible in a pane at the same time. So all three of these are selected, as you can tell up here in the model projects parts list. As well as if you go into another pane that may be hiding, a part hiding behind another part that you can't see, try to grab those. It will only grab the ones that are visible. So you it missed that other hiding one because in this view, the pin is hiding behind that other view of the other pin but you can also select it if you needed to by coming up here into the model parts list and using the control button to add that that other pin to the selection now you can come up here and select them individually just like this and it will also select the different parts and when you start selecting them say if you had this beam selected and you wanted to select both of these parts but you clicked on the this one first you can't click within the binding box to, col to collect another part into the selection you have to either deselect them and select them in sequence so that you can grab them without the binding box being o overtaking them and you do that by holding the control button and clicking on a new part now we're going to zoom a little bit. We're going to hit zoom to fit, which will fit them all, fit all of the fit the model in all, into all of the view panes um, to fit inside the view panes. If we want to do that individually, sometimes you just want to fit one view. You can hit zoom. You right click into an area. You hit zoom, and fit, zoom. Fit, or say if you need all of these to be zoomed at once, you can hit that bar toolbar button, zoom to fit, and it'll make all of them zoom in. Now zooming is neat 
uh, very useful, especially if you have a scroll wheel on your mouse. In your active view pane, the active view pane will have this red binding box uh, border. You can zoom in one of the panes by using your scroll wheel, just scrolling up and down. You can also uh, zoom within a pane by holding the control button and the shift button on the keyboard at the same time, moving down. And if you had a part selected before that happens, it will center the part like it did in this example. Now also, if you wanted to pan, panning is moving a model around in the binding box. So sometimes you want to pan it and zoom in and then pan over a little so that you can see that other portion of the model and zoom in some more. But panning, you can hold the scroll wheel has a button on your mouse. You hold the scroll wheel down and pan that way. Or you can also pan around by using the shift button and right clicking on the mouse and dragging the model. Now the grids, the grid selection up here uh, you want to do most of your work in the course grid. The course grid is fine for moving all the parts in their modules. Uh, all the VEX IQ parts are measured in units. Uh, the module is a, one module is, a, is one of the measurements. So the course grid will move everything one module length, uh, one module distance. Right now we're going to rotate both of these, so I'm going to select them, rotate them once on the x-axis, and then I'm going to move one of the pins into the location I want them to be in, in the beam. Just select it, drag it over. Now see these move the distance of one module snapping along the grid. So one module with VEX parts, one module is the thickness of one beam or half a whole distance across the beam surface. So this would be one module, one module. So you can go in to the holes that are in offsets. The other thing we'll do is add, copy, and paste some parts. So I'm going to select these two pins by selecting the first one with a click, holding down the control button, and selecting another one with another click of the mouse. Now I've collected both of these into a, a temporary group. I'm going to hit the copy button. The copy adds it to a um, adds it to your clipboard and what we'll do is we have it copied to our clipboard and we'll want to paste it somewhere now if we have it and just hit paste now it's added them to the list up here right after the previous parts but they're stacked on top of each other occupying the same three-dimensional space so we'll want to move those to their new location and give them a new color. While we're at it, we're going to color these red. Now, I'm going to do these again. I'm going to hit copy and paste, and it pastes two more red ones underneath these previous red ones. We're going to move those down and copy, uh, color those yellow. Now we have a bunch of parts added, and what we'll do next is uh, show a little bit more detail in the uh, way the grid works. Now the grid we have selected is the course grid. We described that. I'm going to move this part out of the way for a sec and show you moving on the course grid one module will bring it one 
module over, and that's for using the offset holes, or two modules over, we'll put it in the next hole distance. Now, if we were to click the medium grid, it will move parts in a smaller increment and it will take approximately eight, well it will take four snaps to move it one module and eight full snaps to move it over to uh, the next whole distance over. And that can be shown up here in the transformation bar. And moving along the positive, uh, literally on the x-axis, it will take one, two, three, four to move it one module distance, five, six, seven, eight to move it one whole full whole distance over. Now we can do the same thing again in a smaller increment and that would be the fine grid and it takes approximately 16 steps to make one module and 32 steps to make it a full whole distance over. So it would take 32 clicks on this button. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. That's one whole module. 16 clicks more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We'll bring it over to another full whole distance over. Now those stay lined up on on all the grids. It's um, one, two for the course grid, four, eight for the medium grid, and sixteen, thirty-two for the fine grid. Now if we go back to the we're on the fine grid now, if we go back to the course grid, it slides right back over much quicker. You can snap things a lot quicker in the course grid. We recommend staying there as much as possible. Now what I'm going to do next is add some steps. So we added a gray beam and then two blue pins in the first at the first moment and what we could do is make that into a building step generally you add stuff you add parts into a uh, you add a few parts in a layer without covering up more parts you want to you know show what parts are added in the building step before moving on to other parts and possibly covering up parts that you've added before so you want to make sure that you show everything visibly when you're building it in different steps so we've added these three parts here and we want to make those the first step so you would get you would select the last part that you added in that step come up here to the step command add step command button and it would just add a step command you see right here and it's added right after the second blue pin that we added now we're going to add another step right after the red pins we'll just do that again with another step command and it added a step right after the the red pins we'll do another one right after the yellow button yellow pins that we added add another step now generally we do this when we're catting you would add the first three steps then add a step add some more parts add another step add some more parts add another step now those are step commands and step commands uh, become visible when you go to look at your building steps the process and the sequences that you made and this is basically the sequence of your model these these um, this list here is the sequence of your building instructions for your model now we're doing all this in the edit mode. And edit mode is loaded up on 
the installation or the startup of Snapcad. Now, once we're added a few things, we want to check out how the building steps of process, the sequence, is make sure that everything is lined up or um, progressing like we want. We can come over to the view mode button, change the mode, the view mode, the mode to the view button, and use these command buttons here to scroll through the steps. Right now it's at the very first step which would be the right after the second blue pen we did. So it stops. It puts the pieces down in the sequence and then stops at the step command that we made. So that's where it's at right now. The next, if we hit the play or next button on the control bar will show us the next step and that was adding the next two blue pins and the next step would be adding the two yellow pins now each time you add step uh, add parts and a step will be highlighted so the next part at next the next step will show the previous parts added will be grayed a little bit and the parts that you're currently adding will be highlighted. The next time, the next step, same thing. Previous parts are shadowed, the current part is most highlighted. The very last step will highlight the whole model and it will look bright. Now, these buttons can bring you back to the first step or take you directly to the last step in increments. If you were to use your mouse and click in this in one of the drawing panes it will show you the steps also. It just plays through the steps that way. Uh, the 3D view will still allow you to pos position the model and reposition it so that you can see how parts are added if it's difficult to see. The None of these parts can be altered in this mode, in the view mode. No parts can be altered. You have to go back to the edit mode to alter any or modify any of the models. So one last thing is we'll go to save um, this current model. And you can do that by clicking this mouse button or the toolbar button that says save. Or you can go to the file menu and hit save. It will give you the window where things are located for you to uh, save it to a folder on your hard drive. Once you give it a name down here, that name will be saved in the comments area. Uh, the title, the name of the model will be uh, will save as your uh, whatever name you gave it. Um, I believe that's going to be it for now and um, hope this helps. If you have any questions uh, look in the help file or hunt us down and ask a question online. Thank you very much.